And the thing is, it left a chest all covered in this sticky goo. Oh, welcome to Epic TV, and welcome to another Epic TV 10 by 10. 10 questions, 10 minutes. I've got my tea, I've got my biscuits, and in the other end of this Skype, we've got probably the most legendary mountain biker out there, Hans Ray. Question number one, have you ever wished it was called something other than a bunny hop? Yeah, I don't know who, who actually coined that phrase and who we should blame for that one. I tried to rename it in my how-to tape and I did the monkey see, monkey do thing and I tried to call it the cow hop. You progress from bunnies to cows. Pretty much we filmed the segment in a cow meadow with a bunch of cows, so I said, oh, now we're gonna do the cow hop. It didn't catch on though, did it? Not quite. I'm still waiting. It's, it's only been 15 years, so I'm still waiting. Yeah, you, you know, I think the problem was you copyrighted it too early. Uh, just like mountain bikers, one word, never caught on. Never caught on. Question no, number two. Germany it did. In Germany it did. It was what? In Germany, if you look in the dictionary how to correctly spell the word mountain biking, it's one word. They're a law unto themselves, aren't they, Germans? Um, Saying that, uh, you are German, uh, you know, you're Swiss. Born and raised in Germany, you got a Swiss passport, an American passport, and an international passport. Greedy. Uh, question number two, have you ever wished, um, I mean, where did the name Hans come from? Because you could have just as easily be called Norbert, but uh, you are called Hans, and I wondered if you'd called yourself Hans. You know, when a student first arrives at a, a university amongst whole new people, let's say people he's never met before, and he sort of gives himself a nickname like Badger or Fingers or Crusher or something like that. So I wondered if the, the Hans came from you, or where did that come from? It, it kind of came from me, because my, my real name is Hans Jörg. So when I first came to the States, that was kind of a tongue twister for everybody. They were like, Hans Bork, Hans Jork, Hans... So I was like, just call me Ray, and it's easier for you. And then eventually, when I decided I stay a bit longer, I go like, you know, just call me Hans. Yeah, you might have wanted to address your surname as well, because earlier I was texting somebody, and the predictive text for Ray becomes sex, is the first word that comes up. So your name becomes Hans Sex in predictive well, text. No, it depends on the individual's phone and what they have like programmed on their phone, you know, usually. <laughs> We're going to move on now. Uh, question number three. Have you ever wished uh, today's bikes didn't make mountain biking so easy? Because at the end of the day, there's a lot happening, right? Check this guy out, all the way from Scotland, doing backflips up trees and things. I mean, it, how easy can today's bikes make mountain biking? Yeah, they really make it easy, you know, I mean, on those bikes, my grandmother could do those tricks, but... Um... <laughs> uh, you do know Danny, though, right? Ah, uh, yes, of course, of course. The kid's been living everybody's dream, you know, it's an awesome story. Apart from awesome. he's Scottish, that's not anybody's dream. I'll give you the food! No, Danny is a good guy. His story is awesome. It's really inspirational for a lot of people. Not only people who have nothing to do with the sport, but also I think all the pro riders got inspired on one level or another by his his story. And um, yeah, we've done a few trips and things together. Um, Question number four: Has anybody ever, when you've done one of your trials uh, events, your trial shows, which is what launched you into the mountain bike uh, spotlight, if you like? Um, has anybody, have any of the girls ever thrown their knickers at you? You know, that sort of the hero worship thing, rock star? Uh, uh, no, that's, that's, we don't, we never really got that rock status thing going, you know? No yeah. bras on knickers, just like chamois. <laughs> chamois shorts got thrown at you. I mean, what do you make of the whole, the whole hero thing that's developed? And is that a, is that a healthy thing for us for? I think it is good because um, I, I think sports need heroes to flourish and to be accepted also by the mainstream. I mean, the latest example, you know, back to Danny, you know, he became this YouTube sensation and he drew attention to our sport from all kinds of people just because the, the counter underneath his video showed like several million views. So everybody goes like, oh, he must be important and, and people like 
celebrities or so to the sport needs that in certain ways. On the other, on the flip side, mountain biking has so many different facets and a lot of people, they really just do the sport for the sport. You've been flashing a US passport about recently, um, something I'd probably keep, you know, in my back pocket. Um, do you, do you ever ride in the rain nowadays or is it just dust? Didn't know whether you moved to California for tax reasons or um, you just sort of down where you are, you know, Laguna Beach where there's a lot of companies based there and you get a lot of free stuff, a lot of swag. I didn't move there for the rain because it never rains in California, mm. but when it rains, there are some good, cool trails and they actually, some of them get muddy, but others get they're sandy and you can, the traction actually gets better with every raindrop. I kind of got stranded here when I first came to America mm -hmm. and after traveling the world a few times around, I have to say it's, it is a very nice base. Question number six, do you ever get bullied into some of the stunts? I mean, this one here, like with Steve Pete, I know this was going back a few years, a handful of years ago, uh, riding this ledge in Ireland, did that, did, did he bully you? Because Steve can be a little bit of a, you know. You know, like I've been trying all my life to, to make photos and usually of extreme riding situations and usually it never looks as, as hard in the photos than it was, but something about those photos, you know, you kind of get a bit of a sense of the danger and what was involved in it. I couldn't think of anything worse than riding that. I mean, you did pretty much invent extreme mountain bike and I think you coined the term uh, way back in the 80s and I think you're actually responsible for every time I go somewhere exotic and think this is it I'm on a good adventure there's a load of flipping free riders sponsored by Red Bull riding down the mountain in front of me and it's getting on my nerves. It's a natural evolution that keeps going up and down in different directions and and I like the way where the trail ends is going now a bit more to the original free riding, a little bit away from the tricks driven stuff. What I liked about that film was the fact that after like all these like after like 15 years of these free ride films, the filmmakers finally realized that they need to also pack in a little bit of personalities and mm -hmm. culture in these films. Okay, number seven, have you ever been chased by a swarm of killer bees? I've been, you know, there has been incidents with wasps and bees and stuff, but killer bees, um, Sure, they came after me when the same time the grizzly came and the, the dinosaurs. On some, with some of these extreme stunts I've been doing, some of the most dangerous situations are when you when you deal with Mother Nature or and you have to have a certain uh, balance and respect there. You know, be it riding on volcanoes where the lava explodes basically right next to you and you could get hit by a 2,000 degree um, hot piece of lava or you, you do a bike safari somewhere in Africa and all of a sudden a rhino comes out of the bush and if you're slower than your riding buddy, then you're out of luck. I want to see a rhino chase you over this. If you could have got the rhino chasing you on that shot over that arch, that would have been National Geographic. We tried to do it, but it was expensive to fly the rhino to Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Question number eight, you've donated 4,811 bikes around the world to developing countries to, to help villages, which is amazing. <laughs> have you ever wished that you actually sold those bikes instead of giving them away, because you could have retired? I haven't wished that one yet, but there's, there's other bikes I'm trying to sell with my name on, and that's a different thing. As for the charity, it's a beautiful thing to do. It's basically my wife and I who run the charity, and we've. We do these smaller projects. It's more like a grassroots charity. We basically know where every single bike goes. Do you ever go back to some of these developing countries and see some of these bikes that you've been donated being used a little disrespectfully? You know, kids pulling wheelies on them, jumping over bonfires, you know. Well, that kind of behavior is uh, stri strictly um, encouraged. What's next on the Hans Ray schedule? There is a potential trip to the Arctic Circle in Norway this mm -hmm. summer. So yeah, you've done a lot of adventures, uh, a lot of good stuff coming up. Maybe we, as a photographer, we could do a, do a trip together. Sure, buddy. Sure, sure, sure. I'll, I'll get back with you. Well, there we have it. 10 by 10 with Hans Ray. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, tune in next month and um, we might have somebody a little bit more interesting for you. <laughs>